Hello and welcome to the video. This is a very quick video for all you iNav pilots that are struggling with one specific thing that isn't a regular thing that I get asked about, but often enough that I've decided, you know what, it needs its own little video. Now, what it is, it's about when you are setting up something like the Elevons potentially on a flying wing and no matter what you do, you don't seem to be able to get them to move in the right direction manually and also get them to automatically correct in the right direction as well. One of the ways always seems to be off when you're kind of chasing your tail. Now, there's only four things that you need to check, and all of these have already been covered in my iNav for Beginners series. So if you've already followed that and you haven't missed out any steps, then you know what? You'll have got to the end and it'll have worked. Uh, but I know there's quite a few people who haven't watched that series who get to the end of their build and who just are scratching their heads, including a couple of Patreons. So I want to make this video to help. So let me jump onto the bench and actually show you the four things that you need to check and how you can sort it out pretty much every time without too much hassle. So here we are on the bench. I've got my AR Wing Pro and we can plug that into the computer and I'll go through the common things. There's only four things that I would recommend that you check that sort it out pretty much every single time. So first of all, let's plug this into the computer so we can actually talk to it. And I'll go onto the iNav in a minute. Now for the testing, I'm actually using the DJI FPV controller. Don't worry about that, it, the, any radio uh, will work. It's the same for kind of mode one and mode two. So we just need to check that the radio is set up properly as well, because what you can do in iNav is occasionally you can manage to set it up to chase your tail. Other quick tip, of course, is I do have my prop installed here. You can just see at the bottom of the screen. Uh, don't do this on the bench. Don't do what I do. Uh, remove your prop if you're ever going to install main power. I'm going to have to do that, unfortunately, on here. Because with the DJI system, until it's got main power, we aren't going to get a connection. But there's something we can do before we start powering things up, going onto the computer. So here on the computer, let's click Connect. And what we need to do is we just need to lift the nose of the model. And what we should see on iNav is the nose lifting as well. So on the bench, if I lift the nose of the model, then here we go, the, the nose is lifting. That, believe it or not, is a really common problem. If you don't mount the flight controller in the orientation with the little arrow that's printed on it, then the flight controller can potentially read roll as pitch and vice versa, and you can get into a bit of a pickle. Now, I've done lots of videos on how to mount flight controllers in the non-default orientation. And what you need to do is go into the configuration tab, zoom down to the sensor uh, alignment and change these. Now, the reason that that's four is what I found when I did my maiden flight. The nose was a little down. Most flying uh, models uh, need a little bit of nose up in order to not lose altitude at cruise throttle. That was happening here. So that little bit of alignment, all that does is gives me a little bit five degrees nose down. So when she's actually flying, it's actually like that, which is kind of uh, zero. And that seems to be a beautiful uh, attitude to fly in. So once we've got that checked and you're happy that that is working, that is kind of the very foundation of all the next pieces. Next thing we need to do is we need to check that you've got the radio set up properly. So let's power everything. I'll turn on my DJI FPV controller and I'll also plug in the model again. I would heartily recommend remove your prop. I'm just um, not because uh, I'm an idiot. So let's plug this in and wait for it to connect. We should see the LED go green on the controller. There we go, we're connected. Now what we need to do is go into the receiver tab and watch all the controls as I move the sticks to the top right position. So I move them to the top right position on the radio. We should see all the channel values go to their absolute maximum. And that is the way it should be. If it doesn't do that, then unfortunately you need to fix it on the radio. Again, that's the second step because everything is based on the stick direction from here on in, in iNav. Now I would recommend when you set it on the bench, put it into manual mode and then pull the pitch stick down and you should see both the control surfaces rise. Now what I would do, almost certainly, particularly on something like a flying wing, you'll find that one of the controls is reversed when you pull the pitch stick back. So what you need to do 
is go into the outputs tab, scroll down to the bottom, have a look at which servo it's supposed to be. If it's the left hand side, it should be channel three, right hand side, it should be channel four, and then go down into here and reverse whichever of those sides is the problem and then try it again. What you're looking for is to make in manual mode that when you push them both up, they do that. The final step, of course, is then to put it into some kind of stabilized mode and then rock the craft left and right. And you're looking for the control surfaces to rise into position. And if they are moving in the opposite direction, so the way it should work is if I move this wing up, I should see the control surface move up as well and vice versa. If they don't do it like that, then what you've done almost certainly is you've accidentally swapped the two servo connections around. It's easier to do than you imagine because the way it's supposed to work is in iNav, the left hand control surface, the left hand elevator on the flying wing is channel three by default and the right hand one is channel four and that's the way it appears in iNav in this little bit. If you have them the wrong way round, then you're never going to get it all to work and all to line up. And that is a very common mistake. So those are the four things you need to do. First of all, make sure that when you lift the nose of the model, the model in iNav lifts as well. Make sure your board alignment is spot on. I'd always recommend just mount your flight control the right way around in the first place. Secondly, make sure that the radio channel values for the main four controls, uh, aileron, elevator, rudder and throttle go to the maximum values when the sticks are in the top right hand corner and then in manual mode check that you have the directions right if you, that one of them is reversed reverse it in iNav and finally if you then go and flick into a stabilized mode and the stabilize the correction is the wrong way around what you've probably done is swapped servo outputs three and four hopefully that helps those of you that have been struggling with this i know this is quite a common question that i get i have covered it in the inf for beginners 2020 series but for those of you that haven't watched all of those hopefully that will get you out of that sticky situation Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.